Lower Marsh. Great old street, I love it down here. Changed a bit over the years, or the shops have, but you can see the basic shape of the street is still there. It runs just sort of behind Waterloo Station. Of course, as the name suggests, it was once sort of the edge of the, uh, the marshes when the Thames extended this far kind of south. Mary's Caff is one of the old Lower Marsh institutions. So this place apparently has been awarded best coffee shop in the UK in 2015 and the best coffee shop on social media. I don't know what that would indicate that they're good at Instagram. There's a great little independent bookshop there with a cafe, really nice cafe. Been in there with my friend John Paul. Really nice place. Travelling through. Could be my tagline, couldn't it? That's interesting. There's a cafe here called the Channel Bar, and that must date from when the Eurostar, when it started, which I think was what, was it 19? 94 I think the Eurostar opened and it ran from Waterloo to Paris. Of course now it runs from uh, St Pancras International. It's interesting so that now must people must look at that and wonder what on earth it's doing called the Channel Bar. So here we go some proper history about Lower Marsh. Lower Marsh so named because it lies in the site of the ancient Lambeth Marsh which first appeared in historical records in 1377. So the vague plan for this walk today, and vague is indeed, is simply to walk west along the Thames from Westminster. I mean, it really is as simple as that. But already I'm finding it interesting to cut across from Waterloo and cover some of this terrain in between, which I don't really know very well at all. So I'm just here under the bridge in Carlisle Road. And here's this plaque, it's really interesting to see the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. William Blake lived in the corner from here in Hercules Road for 10 of his most productive years from 1790 to 1800. Did not know that. I used to work uh, on the South Bank for a number of years and still wandering around this area. Never been down this street, didn't know it was here. So this is Archbishop's Park, Lambeth. It was once part of the grounds of Lambeth Palace, which is just on the other side of it, I think. And of course, Lambeth, Lambeth Palace being the uh, London residence of the Archbishop of Canterbury. Quite why the Archbishop of Canterbury needs a London residence, I don't know, but there you go. There's a zip line up there that runs across the park. Two people just went flying across, screaming their heads off. Look, goes all the way to the other side of the park. So there it is, Lambeth Palace. Home, London home I should say, it's the Archbishop of Canterbury. Dates from the 13th century. What if I could like just knock on the door and go in for a cup of tea? Hello. Nobody home. And you can see its proximity. It's the Houses of Parliament and Westminster Abbey, just literally across the river there. It's a big cycle race on today in London. I think I will meet it later on, possibly. I don't know what time it finishes. Those ominous dark clouds over Nine Elms are also kind of a metaphor for what's going on along there at the moment an enormous, enormous private development, which
which kind of foreshadows one possible future for London, you know, these investment silos for corrupt money and oligarchs and pension funds and hedge funds that are kind of colonising the city now. But I don't want to let that get in the way of me having a nice stroll. If the property developers got their way, they would build this kind of thing all the way along the Thames, from one end to the next. And successive mayors of London, through Ken Livingstone, Boris Johnson, and even now Sadiq Khan, don't seem to be uh, inclined to do anything about it except encourage it. for a bit of mud larking down there. See that big tower there? That enormous great silo. I think I described that as a, a glass of steel Pringles tube in my book, This Other London. That was where a helicopter crashed into the crane on the top of that about five years ago. Tragically killing, uh, I think it was three people died, one on the street, two in the helicopter, or one in the helicopter and one on the street. So this is the headquarters of MI6, the secret intelligence service. It seems to go from one extreme to the other, from denying that they even existed to having a massive building right on the Thames where no one could miss them. The iconic Battersea power station, inevitably being turned into luxury flats. I think Pink Floyd got it right when they put an enormous flying pig over it. Can you see that little opening in the embankment on the far side there, on the north side of the Thames? I think that is the, uh, one of the rivers, the lost rivers of London emerging into the Thames. I'm just trying to think which one it could be. So I think it's either the Tyburn or the Westbourne. I'll put the correct answer on the screen here. And that's its culvert emerging into the Thames. So this uh, vista here is going to be completely filled in with enormous tower blocks and buildings. This will be completely changed within the next five years. Nine Elms was so named because there literally were nine elm trees along here that the, uh, the boatmen used to use to navigate. It was also an area that was quite well known for its honey. There were lots of beehives here. It's a very historic part of London, this. The US Embassy is going to move down here, and I think the Chinese Embassy as well. I'll put a link below to a video I made a couple of years ago, which is basically just, a, look, it's almost like a slideshow of all the development plans, of schemes around London, and I just call it, is this the future of London? And when you see them all together, it doesn't look very nice. <laughs> Actually, this stretch here along Nine Elms Road or Nine Elms Lane has changed quite significantly since I did the walk for this other London four years ago. None of these buildings ahead of me were here then. I'm pretty sure of it. It's not that I'm one of those people who objects to change per se. For me, it's what underpins this kind of development and this type of change. It's the the model is sitting underneath it, it's the exclusivity of it. If this was a massive uh, social housing scheme, I'd be cock a hoop. I'd be singing its praises to the, to the, from the rooftops. But it's, uh, it's the opposite <laughs> of the social housing scheme. You know, it's, uh, I feel like it's telling me to get stuffed and get lost, if that makes any sense. I feel like they're saying, go on, sod off. <laughs> So 
So this is the site of the new uh, Battersea Tube Station, which I think opens in 2020. It's interesting, I'm just trying to think, when was the last new London Tube Station? I'll put the answer on the screen in a minute. Battersea Park. I needed a bit of park action after that development around Nine Elms. It really is one of London's iconic parks, isn't it, Battersea Park? After watching a particular episode of South Park last night, I feel like I have to go in now. It was an episode where they were all buying local art. Yeah, I can't explain it anymore to you, it will sound bad. The local art was a bit expensive, clearly aimed at, uh, you know, Chelsea prices really. Some peace and serenity emanating from the pagoda. Batsy Buddha. So have you been looking for enlightenment? Here you go, here it is. Sat in the middle of Batsy Park. along the Thames path now, still tempted to strike off inland. Let's see how much longer I can stick to my course. It's great, low tide, you can get right down onto the Thames foreshore here. I wonder how far round you can go. That's another big centre of development over there. Surrounding the old Lots Road power station. I think, or I hope, I'm lucky enough to have caught the river at the right point of low tide where I can make it round to uh, St Mary's Church, Battersea, which is where William Blake got married. So I'm really lucky. There's the uh, spire of the church poking up there. Fantastic. Particularly in light of the uh, start of this walk with the, with the, with the uh, snippet of William Blake poetry and being close to a house where he spent his most productive years. I have to tell you, there's quite a nasty smell of almost like sewagey smell down here. It's not coming from the mud and the water. We've had a lot of rain lately. Sometimes what happens is the, it makes the sewers overflow into the river. It shouldn't do, but it does. So this is the, uh, the location for one of the shoots I did for London Overground with Ian Sinclair. And I filmed Ian walking over the foreshore here down to the water's edge. And Ian explained to me the history of St Mary's Battersea. Now this was where William Blake and Catherine Boucher were married. And also apparently Turner used to sit right out there on the edge of the embankment there, just in front of the church, and this is where Turner painted. Apparently he painted here quite often. 
and the chair, apparently that the chair that Turner used to sit in is inside that church. St Mary's in Battersea is a white church dwarfed by cliffs of river-facing flats and it's a site of abiding significance. This is where William Blake married Catherine Butcher, daughter of a market gardener. Blake moved to the neighbourhood in July 1872 to stay with relatives and establish residence before the marriage ceremony. Catherine, who marked the formal certificate with an X, accompanied Blake through all of his shifts helping with the colouring of his proofs, cooking, keeping house, and singing. And equally inside the church, this old stained um, leather chair that apparently Turner used to live. I mean, there were many, many sites where Turner lived and worked, but Turner dragged this chair out to a perch somewhere here to look at the river and catch the light. So this is Turner's chair, a legendary Turner. He used to sit on this chair out in front of the church and, and paint the Thames in the dramatic skies. There you go, that's an amazing piece of British art history there. Just sat here in the church. So apparently this is the view that Turner took in. He would sit here and paint. So here's William Blake in the window, in the stained glass window. What a beautiful thing. Here we have William Blake and Catherine Butcher, 1757 to 1827. Here, all those lines of poetry again that we saw at the beginning of the war, near Waterloo. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Wow, and this is the first edition of the King James Bible from 1611. That's quite incredible. This is really a, a place for people who are passing through on journeys or pilgrimages. What great London walkers are, will see this milestone, touch the milestone, go down onto the beach and see this chain full of shoes hanging there. It's a good opportunity to use some of that footage with Ian Sinclair from St Mary's Church. I didn't get to use all of that in the actual, in the film. Um, and if you want to see London Overground, it is screening at the um, Portobello Film Festival in September. I don't have the exact date just yet, but it'll be on my blog. It'll be on their website. NetJets, London Heliport. I wonder how many people would know where the London heliport was. Because it's a Sunday, the old heliport's pretty quiet, but during the week, fairly constant. I filmed down here a couple of times, and the helicopters are going over the top the whole time. I suppose in reality this cycle of development going on along the river has been happening since at least the 80s, hasn't it? It's a fantastic uh, clip that I'm sure many of you would have seen doing the rounds on uh, Facebook of Bob Hoskins walking along the South Bank sort of in the uh, early 80s, mid 80s, you know, <laughs> expressing his dismay about what's happening. 
and it's just really it hasn't ever really stopped it's just carried on and just moved further and further along the river in all directions so this A to Z is from 1994 and you can see how where I am now where this development is used to be industrial there was an oil depot here right next to the bridge And uh, that warehouse there, on the other side, you can see, looks as though it's only just been demolished. There's a pile of rubble over there now. So this is where the oil depot was and those works. I filmed um, an episode of uh, the series I made with the great artist Bob and Roberta Smith. Folkestone is an art school. We did one of the episodes down here. I'll link to that series below. Please go over and have a, have a look at that. I'm really proud of that series. It was a, a lot of fun to make it. It's good to still see the Thames at work. It's, a, it's like a little container terminal here. Those containers are full of your household recycling. This is one of the places where it ends up or passes through. So here is an auspicious spot, the point at which the River Wandle makes its confluence with the Sacred Thames. That was a walk I was going to do today. I did think about walking along the Wandle Trail. I decided against it. I will do it one day. Half past five, time for afternoon tea. Well, this is a great spot, isn't it? Wandsworth Park, brushing right up against the Thames. Partney Bridge. I think that's going to be my last bridge of the day. Look, the cyclists are going over it. Of course, St Mary's Putney is best known for being the, uh, the scene for the Putney debates in 1647. Some people would say that the outcome of the discussions that took place in this church really did shape English history, British history, ever since down to today. Putney Bridge. It's very fitting that I end by crossing back over the bridge to the north side of the Thames.